Hi everyone, Matt Collins here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to explore the largest feature on any lake or fishery, and that's the margins. This video isn't necessarily about fishing at close range, fishing at half a wrap. This can be applied if you're fishing along a margin or more commonly across to a margin. I'm going to show you the techniques that I use to thoroughly understand what's going on along a margin. Margins are not static. These spots grow and develop and change day in, day out. So if you can keep up to speed with the activity that's going on down there below the surface, you will catch more carp. I'd like to introduce you to the most accurate piece of feature finding equipment in carp fishing. Now the good news is this is not something that you have to buy. You already own a pair of these. The best feature finding kit that you have is your feet. So I'm going to hop in the waders and we're going to go for a little walk along the margin and see what we can see. Now you're not going to be able to do this at every venue because some venues ban wading. You might not have a pair of waders. If you don't have a pair of waders and the weather's warm, then you can put a pair of swimming trunks on, but do put some diving shoes on or something like that, because it can be very, very hard on the feet otherwise. The other thing we're gonna need is a prodding stick. Now this could be anything, to be honest. I've got an old curtain pole here that I've just whipped some string around to form a handle, or you could go the whole hog and buy yourself a proper prodding stick. Very light, good for multiple depths and stuff, but if you're just going down the shallows, then any old stick will do. Right, let's get my waders on and go for a paddle. Okay, I've just hopped in the margin here. I'm just a few feet from the bank and it's really, really soft underfoot. Getting all sorts of bubbles coming up and it's stinky, it's black and it's horrible. If I very, very gently rest the pole, I can just feel the top of the silt. And if I drive that down, you see it drops, it's about three inches there. So again, it's just the top of the silt there. It's very delicate when you're doing this, otherwise you're just driving it through that first soft layer. And then we drive it down until we hit solid. So about three inches of silt there, but it feels really gloopy and really horrible. If you've never done wading before, don't do this alone. Always go with a friend and make sure you've got a prodding pole because if you don't understand the lake bottom, you can get yourself into trouble really quickly. Now, I know I can go left here just a little way and the silt is gonna get really nasty. It's probably about 18 inches deep, even just a meter to my left here. So let's go and have a little explore in there and I'll try not to get stuck. It's not that bad actually. I thought it was going to be worse than that. About six, nine inches of silt. Quite soft. Very gloopy. These bubbles coming up are gases that are trapped within the silt. Things like methane and other slightly noxious gases. You might get a rotten egg smell coming off these bubbles and it's not very nice. This is a sign that this silt is anaerobic because there's not enough oxygen in the silt for the silt to be broken down properly. There will be life in there in the upper layers of course, but the deeper down you go, the, the less the oxygen and the less life there is. If you can get in the water and use your feet and use a prodding pole and understand actually how much silt you've got in certain areas, then that's great. But what's really helpful is to translate that information into what silt like this feels like through the end of a fishing rod. So once I've explored an area, I could get a fishing rod and I could have a little tamp around with just a bare lead and it might feel a lot firmer than it actually feels to my prodding pole and my feet. The other thing, of course, you can do is actually drag a lead along a silty margin 
and you'll feel how heavy and loopy it is and it will give you an idea of just what that kind of type of feature feels like through a rod because obviously I'm not going to be able to wander out into the middle of the lake and do this. So by using a combination of my feet and a prodding stick and a leading rod or a marker rod I can start to build a picture and understand with just a few casts what I'm actually fishing over when I can't get access to that piece of water. It takes time, it takes trouble, it takes practice, but as the years go on, this is something that you'll get better and better at. Right, so this is some gloopy, horrible stuff. Let's take a little wander along the margin and find some more interesting features that I actually might want to fish in. So I've come over to the shade of this marginal tree and things really start to change. I can feel some nice gravel below my feet and when I tamp the stick we're getting a nice amount of sound coming through the stick. These carbon poles they do transmit the sound really well. We've got a bit of a rock I can feel over there. Quite typical that where you've got a rock there'll be a kind of cleaned area in front of it. We've seen that an awful lot here. Now I can feel that this area isn't entirely cleaned. I haven't baited this at all, I haven't even fished it for the, this year at all, but it could definitely be developed into a spot. You've got some nice clean gravel and then you've got a light layer of silt on top of it. So with a consistent and routine application of bait, the fish would come in, eat the bait, and they'd basically polish the stones and this would become harder and harder and harder. When I'm tamping the bottom and moving around there are no bubbles coming up at all so there's no trap gases it's just a nice light layer of very aerobic silt onto some gravel and with a bit of work this would be a fantastic area to fish. If you're on a water with other anglers and you found an area like this, you can be pretty sure that this area has been very lightly fished. It certainly hasn't been baited much. So good information and something that can be developed into a nice little hotspot for yourself. What I've found here over the years is that there's a magic depth that carp really love to feed along the margins. And it tends to be from just below waist height to just up to waist height and if I go further backwards all of a sudden we're going to see the bubbles in the silt come up and this has gone a little bit soft. So this magic strip follows the line of this margin all the way along and it's like this all over the lake and I'm sure it'll be a very similar story on plenty of other waters. Okay let's continue the tour and see what else we can find. So I've come along to a spot I know very well. I bait it virtually every day and underneath my feet it's really clean and really polished. You can hear how hard that is coming up through the pole and if I wiggle my feet you might be able to pick up the audio coming through my waders. It's about four and a half foot deep and it's a nice gentle flat polished slope. It's just the perfect place to catch a carp. I like a shallow gentle slope like this because it makes getting the right line lay so much easier. If you've got a sharp margin like this you can imagine the line coming in at an angle and no amount of backleading is going to solve that problem but if you've got a nice gentle slope like this one is then with a, with a back lead or just a slack line depending on the range then it's much easier to get that leader and the main line to lie nicely in approach to the spot. It makes a big difference to the number of pickups that you can get from a spot if you get your line lay right and choose your spots wisely. If you ever get the chance to strap on a pair of waders and go exploring the margins of a lake I'd really advocate that you do so because you'll learn so much so fast. Again I could get a leading rod and I could just drag a lead through this area and I could very quickly tell how clean this area is. I can feel how clean it is through my feet and 
how that feels is what clean gravel feels like. And if I went to a slightly dirty area and dragged the lead through that, you'll feel the sensation through the braid is a little bit dulled. And that's because there is a fine layer of silt over the gravel. You can tell that you're on gravel, but you can still feel that fine layer of silt. When you find an area as clean, as polished as this, there's nothing getting in the way because you're getting that jag, jag, jag right through the braid, telling you what you need to know. So there you go. The best feature finding equipment is something that you already own. It's your feet.